Good morning and welcome to Morocco. My name is Caroline and I'm traveling around this gorgeous country for a couple of weeks with my other half Andy and a whole bunch of newfound friends. So we've joined onto an intrepid tour. This morning we have come along to Fez and we are going to spend just one day doing a very, very intense tour of this city. We're gonna start off by driving around in a private minibus to see a few of the places that are a little bit more dispersed, such as the palace. We're gonna go up to a beautiful viewpoint. Or later on, we're gonna actually go inside of the old city into those labyrinthine streets and we're gonna see a whole load of different things in there. So I can't wait to take you along with me. This looks very new and it's because it was only built about 50 or so years ago. Originally it used to be one door into the palace and it was made out of cedar wood, but 50-ish years ago the king asked local craftspeople to create a piece of art. Instead of it being a cedar wood door, he asked for it to be bronze and about every six or so months they have to shine it and it's only done using lemon juice. We've also got the tiles going on at the side, which we've learned is called Zalij in Moroccan, but obviously we know it as being a mosaic. And he was explaining that the colours represent lots of the different cities. So Fez that we're in at the moment is represented by the blue. You've got the red that comes from Marrakech. You've got the white that comes from Rabat. The green that comes from Meknes. He was saying that there's black in some of the other mosaics and that's representative of the continent of Africa. And then you've also got the yellows, which is representing the Berbers. He just told me oh. that the red represents the patriotism and the blood that runs in the country, and the green represents peace. You talk about a flag. The flag, yeah. Ah, I thought See. you talked about the mosaic. How is it, Eric? Very good. Oh, very good. <laughs> <laughs> The Medina wasn't built at once. So when I said 9th century, it means I'm talking about the heart, the authentic area. But if we go up, you can see some houses, some buildings, this back of 17, 18, 19th century, which is not old for us. <laughs> if you can see the Medina from the other side, we have some apartments. There is a river that split the Medina into two sections. One is called the Karawiyin, because 800 families came from Kirawan as refugees and they settled on this bank of the river. Others who came from Andalusia, from Spain, and they settled on this bank of the river, they are called Andalusia, Andalus. But today, of course, just the quarters. We don't talk about this is Andalusian, this is Karawiyin. Call them Fassi from Fes. Fes is also melting pot, mixture of people, Arabs, Jewish, Berbers, so uh, different people that are living in different places. We've been brought along to a place called Art Naji and it's where there's loads of artists and craftspeople and it's all around the ceramics and pottery. We're going to get the opportunity to see right from the very start where you get the clay through to the people who have trained their skills in using the potting wheel to be able to shape it through to the painters. You can see out here where you've got all of the pottery just out in the sun baking and drying out. the shape and then we do the details. With these pieces we work upside down like a puzzle and then we fix the frame. We add some pure concrete for the pieces to stick together and then fiberglass. Leave to dry, turn over and here it is the result in the wall. Fountains, tables, mirrors. We put outside snow, raining till minus 35 degrees. No problem. The last room that we've been in is where they're doing all of the patterns and paintings and designs. And they were explaining to us that if it's the Berber pattern, it's all freehand. But if it's the Islamic pattern, it's all used by stencils. Eric, did you purchase something? Yes, I did. So I got little espresso sets made for friends and family back home. So I got 10 sets. I'm going to hand them out to friends and family. Nice. I'm to make it more traditional. Even sometimes some people wear 
The bus has dropped us off right on the very edge of the Medina here in Fez and one of the first things that I pick up on is how many donkeys and also carts there are sat on the edge and our guide was just explaining that once you get inside of the Medina there's no vehicles, there shouldn't really be any motorbikes or bicycles either and so if people are staying inside of the Medina in guest houses it means that they can go to the people with those carts or with those mules and they can get their suitcases put in those and they can easily get through with all of their luggage. Behind me is a house and our guide has explained that within the Medina there's three different types. You can get Dar, which is the smallest. And he reckons that inside of that one there's probably about eight rooms. The next size up is then the Riyads and the biggest ones within the Medina are the palaces. The one behind us, he said, was up for sale because in Arabic there was a for sale sign above the door up until quite recently. And he's saying it costs about 200,000, which seems crazy given that it's in a bit of a dilapidated state and it would need to be improved. What he then went on to say is that because we've only just entered into the Medina, it means that it's a lot more lucrative. And it's because most of the people who'd be buying up these sorts of houses are gonna then convert them into tourist accommodation. And tourists tend to feel a little bit happier being right on the edge of the Medina because one, they're not able to get quite so easily lost. And then two, it means that their luggage doesn't have to be carted quite as far. We just finished up in the soup where you've got all of like the meats and the fish and the fruits and the vegetables and it really is just a party on the senses. What's really cool is that there's so much stuff that you just see out on the market stalls that we don't get at home. Most notably a camel's head just hanging outside of a butcher's. So now we've come out into a really small square and we were told that in Fez the squares do tend to be much smaller in comparison to somewhere like Marrakech and around here people are actually fixing a lot of the metal works that have been broken and we've also learned that instead of people buying these they tend to just get rented out particularly for things like weddings. I have a new Arabic word added to my dictionary now, which is belek. I've heard quite a few people shouting it because they're trying to get past with things like the carts as they're getting goods to the different shops and also things like horses and carts. And again, the owners of those going belek, belek. It's basically move out the way. There we go, belek. <laughs> The next stop is going to be the tanneries and this has to be hands down the thing that I'm most excited about getting to see here in Fez. This will, uh, like we did in the portrait, we'll show you the process and we'll tell you that you have time to put that in the the area up above the tanneries is completely enclosed, you can't see it from street level, meaning that you'll need to come into one of the many leather shops or cafes that are dotted around it to be able to get access up onto the rooftop terraces to look down. Now it's interesting listening to the guides because I'm hearing over and over again that the different colours are coming from natural products. So for example, if they're trying to dye the leather yellow, then it's come from saffron. If it's blue, then it's come from indigo. I have read things that are contradicting this. My own understanding was that traditionally this is how they dyed the leathers but more recently with modern day technologies they've gone over into chemicals which obviously isn't great because if you look down there you can see that the male workers are actually submerging their lower parts of their body into the liquid and if that is chemicals in there that's got to be raging havoc on their bodies but obviously if it is natural products such as saffron for example that would be a lot healthier for them. So I'm, I'm really not too sure. Do comment down below if you are a little bit more confident with what you think that is making these colors.
Having finished up at the tannery, we are now heading to something that was once a fondue, but is now a museum for wood. Back in the 14th century, these fondues were used for people who were travelling across the country to be able to sell their goods. So often they would rock up with things like camels, probably most commonly, but it could also be things like mules and donkeys. And the ground floor was used as stables so that their livestock could sleep in here. And then the upper floors is where the people would sleep. Dotted around, you've also got scales, and the idea was these were provided to the customers so that they could weigh their goods and they knew exactly how much they brought. Had anyone stolen anything along the way? And perhaps after they'd had a night to sleep here, they could reweigh again the next morning to make sure that perhaps while staying here, no one had stolen any of their goods either. This building didn't go straight from being a fondue to a wood museum. It was in fact used as a police station back in the early 1900s. We've just found the cell where they would hold their prisoners. We've left the fondue and we're now headed up towards the shrine of Molay Idris. All of the shops that we're passing usually are selling to people who want to purchase them to put them down as a gift. So this is what we call Madrasa. They came here from all over, not only from Morocco. They came from Africa, from Europe, and from Morocco to study the science of theology. Today, we have in Fez nine Madrasas compared to Marrakesh, to Rabat, to Meknes as imperial cities. This is big number. Because Fez is considered always the intellectual capital. This has got to be one of the most beautifully decorated schools that I've ever been in. Not too dissimilar to our universities back home in the UK, where if you've got a subject that you really want to study, and you know that there's a university well known for it, but it's nowhere close to home, you can move into university provided halls of residence. And the same in this school, the upper levels had dormitories in them, allowing for the students to be able to sleep here. <laughs> We've left the school and it is absolutely manic. It was not this crazy when we went inside. I can't remember where we're headed to next, but we'll just keep on following our guide. Turns out that it was a shop that sells lots of different types of fabrics, so things like dresses and bedspreads and scarves and so on. My opinion is for one husband and two wives. It's too, it's too big for a couple. I'm sure if there is two wife include in the price, you will buy two. <laughs> you are not obliged to buy them, but you don't have choice. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I do my business. <laughs> don't trust me. <laughs> I show you how to do turban, we do false knots. Then we put on hat like that. We close it from the middle. We twist it. Then we be sure that we cover everything because we have to protect everything. Then we turn it around on hat like that. Then we fix it. Easy. Hmm? We open the false knot. And he looks a handsome Pasha. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, seriously, the rest of the fabric, we use it to cover our faces, as I told you, and our neck from a dust and from a sun. You wear it, you buy it. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't know. 
He is not obliged, but he don't, he don't have choice. So, for ladies, it's with a sprinkle tread, so it's become, you know, fancy. <laughs> fancy and sexy, and there is, we need a sexy lady. Where, where, where is she, the sexy lady? There she is. Oh, that's you, madame. Good? Thank you. You're welcome. 50 camels. Oh, that's more. Oh, 50 camels. Come on, I will mention the prices. The blue one, it costs 100 dirhams. With no... No. <laughs> With all the package, I sell you for 120. <laughs> oh, you, you <laughs> this one, the sparkly one, it cost 150. But the package, 150 plus three kilo of gold, 5,000 carbon, and one hammer. <laughs> Sold it. <laughs> Thank you.